committee chairman Dr. Nemala for giving me this opportunity to speak on uh, spirometry. Spirometry is not synonymous with the pulmonary function test. There are many pulmonary function tests, one of which is the spirometry. The main aim of keeping this topic here is, this is a very important function that can be kept in the clinic, in our uh, office practice. It is just like a thermometer regarding the temperature or a spigomanometer regarding the blood pressure, not more than that. Spirometry, the term is spiro means in the Greek for breathing. Metry is the measurement, so it is the measurement of breathing, the measurement of the lung volumes. Suppose if you take of a classical case of asthma, that's where we don't have any difficulty in diagnosing. So like family list of asthma is there or family list of allergic rhinitis is there. And these wheezing episodes are, associ are not associated with the fever, there is ephebral episodes. Trigger factors are present like dust allergy or cool atmosphere, or cool items. And a pump relief with the bronchodilator, acute induced cough, that is cough induced by laughing, crying, or exercise. See, if all of these are there, the diagnosis is obvious and there is no difficulty in uh, arriving to the diagnosis of bronchial asthma. Or at least few of are there that will be helpful and we can initiate the treatment. Basically, uh, as you know, asthma is a clinical diagnosis. But in certain circumstances, where you do, don't have these features, definitely we need an objective test. The spirometry is an objective test which demonstrates the reversible airflow obstruction or otherwise called the variable airflow obstruction. For example, if you take a case like this, a seven year old child, with history of frequent VG episodes during the last one year. And there is no family history of allergies, and no history suggests of any triggering factors, and the relief with bronchodilates is a question mark. Parents are not sure whether the child is completely relieved or it is a partial relief. And there are no acute injuries with symptoms. So here we had to establish an objective, objective evidence because if we start the ICS inhaled corticosteroids, it goes for a long time, almost for a one year minimum. Before going, venturing into that, so we can do a spirometry wherever it is feasible, around uh, six to seven years. Or uh, sometimes, it may be one year less, some intelligent children can do the spirometry even a little bit younger also. Let us go back to the historical details. In 1681, the first attempt to measure lung volumes was done by Giovanni Borelli. He used a cylindrical tube through which liquid is sucked and this, the meniscus, the height of the meniscus, how, how the meniscus was displaced upwards, so was taken as the measure of lung volumes. In 1727, Stephen Hales used the maximum volume of air that could expire into the bladder, thereby measuring the volume of water that was displaced. 1841, Sir Johnson Hutchinson he experimented with a water sealed drum to measure the volumes of the exhaled air and that he named it as the vital capacity. And some of the historical aspects of the spirometry. So what exactly is the spirometry, what are we going to do? It's a measure of air flow and lung volumes during the forced expiratory maneuver after taking the full inspiration. After taking the full inspiration, then we have to expire to the maximum extent possible. So that is the, that how we measure the lung volumes. Then what are contraindications for doing this pyramidy? No absolute contraindications, but any maneuver that raises intracranial, intrathoracic, intraabdominal pressures, they are all uh, relative contraindications like recent eye, thoracic or abdominal surgery, recent migraine infarction, of course in the adults, unstable cardiovascular status. And another one is the facial palsy, any stroke involved facial palsy, that is the mechanical discomfort in holding the mouthpiece and not a contraindication as such but the mechanical problem holding a mouthpiece. This is an instrument, simple, a portable one. It can be kept in the clinic, especially those <coughs> who are interested in doing the uh, asthma practice. Same thing, it is a small instrument. It costs around uh, 1 to 1.5 lakhs, depending upon the company. 
बिफोर गोइंग टू द स्पायरोमेट्री फर्स्ट थिंग लेट अस गो फ्रॉम टू द बेसिक्स ऑफ द लंग वॉल्यूम्स और कैपेसिटीज व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिफोर गोइंग फॉर दिस स्पायरोमेट्री इंटरप्रिटेशन हियर दिस इज द टोटल टोटल लंग कैपेसिटी इज डिवाइडेड बाय वाइटल कैपेसिटी एंड रेसिडियल वॉल्यूम इन द स्पायरोमेट्री वी आर गोइंग टू मेजर द वाइटल कैपेसिटी that the force of vital capacity and other things this is the inspiratory capacity functional residual volume then this total lung capacity is divided into the inspiratory reserve volume tidal volume expiratory reserve and residual volume residual volume cannot be measured through the spirometer it needs a whole body plethysmography that is an entirely different instrument with the spirometer we can measure we can measure the forced vital capacity there are many indices are there but most important for us is the forced vital capacity that is the air that is exhaled outside after taking the maximal inspiration another is the fe1 forced expiratory volume at the end of 1 second and the ratio of fe1 by fec these three are crucial for interpretation of the the spirometer reports and this force expiratory flow up to 25% between 75% this is important especially for measuring the function of this smaller airways of course peak expiratory flow can also be seen on this spirometry card prior to the spirometry as usual verbal consent has to be taken check for any contra indications we already discussed take the accurate height ethnic origin of the child age and also sex room should be comfortable temperature and patient it can be taken in the sitting posture as a standing either way the spirometry can be done preparation we should not be in a, should not have taken alcohol four hours before the test a large meal before the two hours smoking one hour and vigorous exercise should not be there before 30 minutes and with a loose comfortable clothing there should not be any tight belt in a relaxed environment how this is done we have seen already the instrument and with uh, we have to, uh, one has to keep the mouthpiece in the mouth the tongue should not obstruct the opening of the mouthpiece after taking a few normal tidal respirations one has to take a deep inspiration deep inspiration after that very forced and fast expiration as much of the air as hard and as fast one can and should exhale the whole air that is that means only residual volume is left in the lungs so this step is very important we have to encourage him to exhale as much air as possible and as long as he can minimum 6 seconds in the adults and minimum 3 to 4 seconds in the childhood age group so this is very important so as hard and as fast one can do to blow out the air this is very crucial because unless this is done we cannot get the exact cause because spirometry is an effort dependent one has to put effort if the effort, if one if the less effort is there it can mimic a restrictive lung disease also so the effort is very important then again a deep quick and full inspiration and repeat it at least 3 times we have to take the best of it maximum 8 times can be done but we have to take the three curves best curves from the eight spirometer is a device used to measure the time and expiration and uh, inspired volumes and from these we can calculate how effectively and how quickly the lungs can be emptied and uh, so it's a, a device it we have two curves one is the flow volume another thing is the volume time curve this is a volume time curve and, and we will we'll be going to this curve and this one is the flow volume curve two curves will be there for interpretation this is the flow volume this is here volume is depicted on the x axis and the flow rate is on the y axis this is the inspiratory curve and this is expiratory one and for obstructive airways this is the most important expiratory inspiratory this may not be important this is the peak expiratory flow and this is the 25% of the volume is exhaled and here up to the 75% fvv1 comes somewhere here and this center thing is the vital force to vital capacity this is a volume time curve the time is depicted on the x axis volume on the y axis in the curve goes like this this is the uh, force to vital capacity and if you and some way this here force expected volume at the end of 1 second and the minimum time is the uh, 6 seconds in the adults and then the childhood age group it can be 3 to 4 seconds is enough or 
a one second plateau that is enough. Suppose if it is not uh, uh, four to six seconds, uh, one second plateau is enough. So now both are uh, depicted on the same slide. This is the uh, flow volume, this is the volume and this is the flow rate. The here it is, this is the VT curve that is the, this is the time and this is the volume. Before taking the software, performing the test, uh, before considering it is a valid, there should be acceptable criteria and reproducible criteria. And what is acceptable criteria and what is reproducible criteria? Let us go into that. Acceptable criteria is that there should not be any inadequate effort. The full effort has to be shown. Otherwise, it's not valid. Next thing is there should not be any hesitancy while starting the test and there should not be any cough and there should not be any early termination. That is, a breathing stopped before the full air is exhaled. There is an abrupt stop. There should not be like that. And there should not be any glottic closure or obstruction of the mouthpiece by tongue. So all these features should be there to produce an effective curve which is eligible for interpretation. What is reproducible? After performing the test, we take the three best curves and the three best the value should not be more than the five percent. So the value should be within the five percent. Otherwise, it's not valid. See here, almost the, in, in this, this is the flow. This is the flow volume curve. Almost they are very closer. The best three best curves are almost closer. And the values are as near FEC as the FEN, almost nearer. And the difference is not more than five percent. And this is the valid curve of the flow volume. And the time volume time also. Almost they, they don't vary more than 5%. So this is a valid curve. This table is very important. This is the center point of the whole spirometry after performing a spirometry, proper spirometry. Here this is the uh, forced vital capacity and this is the Fe1 by FEC ratio. If the forced vital capacity is more than 80% and the Fe1 and FEC, FEC ratio more than 70%, that is normal. And if the force vital capacity is more than 80% and the Fe1 by FEC ratio is less than 70%, that is an obstructive disorder. And the FEC is less than 80%, but Fe1 and FEC is normal, that is more than 70, that is a restricted effect. And both are less, that is FEC less than 80 and Fe1 and FEC is less than 70, it is a mixed obstructive and restricted effect. So this table is very important for the interpretation. So these are some of the fallacies. This should not be taken into consideration. Here it is a poor effort. See the curve is small, it should have been like this. If the effort is poor, it mimics a restrictive lung disease. Same thing, poor effort and the volume time curve. And he, here it is, a, again this the effort is not good here. Same is the defective unsatisfactory start. See there is a hesitancy in the starting. Hesitancy. Otherwise, it should have been like this, uh, this dotted line should have been like this. Because of hesitancy, it has taken a, fra a fraction of a second here. There should not be any hesitancy. There should not be any early termination. See, this, uh, this is the actual curve and it was terminated here. So that gives a false value of the FEC. FEC will be reduced. Same thing on the volume time curve. This, the, this, this should have been the actual curve because early termination, it flattened. Here itself. So, Bhav, you have another one minute. Yeah, yeah. And here is cough in the first second. Cough also interferes the interpretation. And this cough again, the volume time curve. And the graph, it should be here it is less than four seconds. Less than four seconds. So, it gives a false value, low value. So, this much low volume is recorded. See, in the obstruction, what happens? This is the normal curve. As the obstruction increases, the concavity increases like this. This is the severe obstruction. Red line is the the concavity is the, depicts the severity of the obstruction. Same thing here also, volume time curve. And here the restrictive pattern. What happens? The small curve. Say this is the normal one. This is the small one in the inspiratory. So all the volumes will be decreased in the restricted. Day. This is the restricted one. Same thing on the volume time graph. After that, post the bronchodilator, we have to give a bronchodilator and see the response. So this, this one is the before giving the bronchodilator and this upper one is after giving the bronchodilator. So there is an improvement, significant improvement of giving the bronchodilatation. You see here, the improvement of 
according to general guidelines, improvement of 12% says that is a reversible air flow obstruction consistent with the diagnosis of bronchial asthma. Here the reversible, here is almost, uh, see, uh, nearly 37%. Just to summarize, this is an obstructive defect with a concavity. This is the normal one, flow volume. And here is the restrictive one. And it is both obstructive and restrictive. Concavity as well as small volumes are there. For completion sake, we can detect any obstruction, intrathoracic or extrathoracic, especially it is important in adults. Just for completion sake, I have kept. This is inter, this uh, uh, extra thoracic will have a flattened uh, inspiratory curve and inter thoracic is a flattened uh, this thing, inspiratory curve. And where the fixed obstruction is there, both the curves will be flattened. Like and subscribe Eagle Media Works.